We thank you this morning because our hearts are yearning for you, dear Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Our hearts are hungry and thirst of you this morning, our Father and our God. May you come and quench the thirst of our hearts this morning. May you come and satisfy the hunger of our hearts, dear Lord. Feel us the bread of heaven this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, even, even as we hear your word, I pray for the flow of your grace upon our lives. The grace that saves, the grace that heals, the grace that delivers. I pray for the flow of your grace this morning. Minister to us this morning, our Father and our God. May we not just hear you this morning, but may we also see you this morning in our lives, dear Father. In this service, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the power that is in your word. May it be at work in our lives this morning. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed and believed. Amen, amen. We may take our seats in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Buona Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. Kwa sababu amtaki kusema vizuri, salimia your neighbor na umpatie ushuhuda wa dakika was that that a seconds. Salimia your neighbor na umpatie ushuhuda wa that a seconds. Maybe you have not testified to anybody this morning. Tell them you are still born again. Thank you. Bona Yesu asifiwe. My name is David Moshiri. I love Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I am happy this morning for the joy of the Lord that is my strength this morning and for the grace of God that has kept me and that has brought me this far. I am grateful to God even to have an opportunity to come so that we may serve the Lord together, we may worship together, and even as we hear the word of God together, I am grateful to the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am not new here. I am a friend of this church and this parish. And I thank God for the opportunity to minister together. Even this morning as we hear the word of God. My message this morning or the message that the Lord has given us for this day. And I know it is the message that has been going throughout this month. And I believe it is not ending today. It is the message of restoration. And that is my message this morning. Restoration or revival. When we talk of restoration... It is as also we are speaking of revival. And this is the message God has given us for this season. This is the message that God has given us for this moment. And I thank God for the scriptures that we have read from the book of Joel and Luke. And also our call to worship from Revelation. Because they are all converging to that message of, of restoration and revival. And I want to begin by saying as God spoke to Joel in the book of Joel chapter 2, God spoke to Joel at certain time in Israel when they had gone through a lot of laws because of the locusts, it, they had devoured their nation and God said something that is very surprising. He says that I, I know that you have gone a lot of laws because of my army that I sent among you. So God was saying that the season you have gone of loss, the season you have gone that you have lost so much, I was very much aware of that season. And he says my time has come to come and restore all that has been devoured by the locust. In other words, God was saying my time has come to come and restore you. My time has come to come and revive you. And I want to say, brethren, the time we are in, the season that we are in, God is speaking the same message to the church. God is speaking the same message to us that we are in a season when he is coming to revive the church. Because when God is doing something, he will do it on what we call kairos. Because God works on appointed times. When God wants to do something, he will do it on an appointed time. God has a time to do everything. And this is what we call kairos. Because we have what we call chronos, that is all the days in the year Karada. But there is a specific time that God chooses to do something, and that is what we call kairos. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 3, chapter, uh, verses 11, that you make beautiful all things at their time. So he has a time for everything. He has a time to do something. And this time in church, God is saying it is time to revive the church. God understands the season, the time that we have gone through as the church. A time of drought, a time of famine, 
I'm not speaking of the physical, but now I'm speaking of the spiritual. Because when God is talking of bringing revival, it is because the church has been in a spiritual famine, in a spiritual drought, and God says, this is my appointed time. And I want to say this morning, my brother, my sister, because God does things on an appointed time. It is good to maximize the movement and to rightly position yourself and to respond appropriately so that you may not miss out on what God is doing at a particular time. All times will not be times of revival. After God has revived the church, he will go to do something else. And so if you are bypassed by this time, if you are not revived at this time, you may be left in a spiritual famine, you may be left in a spiritual drought for a very, very long time because you have to wait for another cycle when God you have chosen to do that very thing. Hallelujah. Amen. And so individually and corporately as a church, we must be alert, we must be sensitive of what God has chosen to do at this time. Because this is a kairos, this is a beautiful time for revival and God to awaken us as the church in Jesus' mighty name. And God tells Joel that I am coming to restore. I know when God speaks of restoration, he is talking of restoring, of restoring us in every area of our lives. Restoring our spiritual lives, restoring our families, restoring our businesses, restoring every area of our lives. So when God is speaking of restoration, it is wholesome. It is all loud our lives. But this morning I just want to concentrate on one area, spiritual revival and restoration. Why? Because when men and women are restored spiritually, every other area of their lives begins to fall into place. And that's why Jesus said, Seek for the kingdom of God and other things shall be added unto you. When spiritual revival comes, all other things begin to fall into pleasure. Our families begin to fall into pleasure. And even our businesses begin to fall into pleasure. So if the church is revived spiritually, if we are revived spiritually, every other area of our lives will have no choice but to catch the fire of revival in Jesus mighty name Amen. hallelujah Amen. on Friday I was in Imara Daima for Akesha in Nehemiah church and we had a very powerful time of prayer throughout the night until almost in the morning and one thing surprised me so much is what I'm telling you now that if the spiritual Restored. Everything else has no choice but to fall into place. And I was preaching a message I preached here during the revival on dealing with the issues of the heart and dealing with the things that divide our hearts and affect our relationship with God. And after that, we had like three non stop prayers of dealing with our hearts, dealing with the bitterness, dealing with unforgiveness, dealing with the compromise and murmuring, dealing with all the issues of our hearts. And uh, there's one woman who had come in that church. She belongs to that church. And the previous, the same week, she had had an accident and her leg was swollen. In fact, she came with her shoes when they were not tied because one of the legs that was affected could not fit in the shoe. And she was in a lot of pain. All along when we were praying, when I was preaching, she was seated all along. But when we began to pray, and God was leading us to deal with one issue at a time, we dealt with the bitterness, and it came a time when I said, now it is time to begin to deal with unforgiveness. Begin to mention everyone you have carried in your life. Mention them by name. We have ample time. It is a cash. Don't just do it uh, comprehensively. Begin to mention them. And this is what he told us. The moment she began mentioning one by one, she felt a lot of heat on the leg. She was still seated because she couldn't stand. And she wondered what is happening. As she continued mentioning many people that she was forgiving and forgiving, the heat increased. And she stood up and she realized the pain has gone and the shoe has fit in the, in the shoe. The swelling has gone away. 
We didn't need to pray for her healing. But when the spiritual life was restored, the health fell into place. What is revival? What is restoration? Number one, so that we can maximize on our time. When God is speaking of revival at this time, what is God talking about? Number one, it is to bring back to life that what is dead. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, when God is speaking of revival, when he's speaking of restoration, number one, it is to bring back to life that what is dead. And in the book of Revelation 1, 3, 1 to 3, God speaks to a church called Sardis, and he tells this church, you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Awake and strengthen yourself because even of other things that are about to die. God is telling the church of Sardis, there are things that are already dead in you and there are others that are just about to die. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. So there can be things that are dead in our lives. We may have a reputation of being alive, but we are walking in death because there are things that are dead in us. And I've said this morning, I want first to concentrate on the spiritual. So when God is speaking of revival, the revival that is God is bringing in the church this time, the revival that God is bringing, the restoration, it is bringing back to life that what is dead. And I want to speak of one major thing, that God is bringing back to life in church in this revival. And it is my prayer that even as we live here, we are going to cry to God that let this come back to life in me. The first thing that God wants to bring back to life in this revival, it is the reality of Christ in our hearts. It is our hearts being alive to the reality of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. What God is restoring in this revival, in the church number one, and this is the major, it is the reality of Christ in our hearts. Brethren, I want to tell us this morning, it is possible to speak about Christ, it is possible to read about Christ, it is possible to sing to him, but the reality of him is not in our hearts. Our hearts may be totally dead to the reality of him. We are singing for him, we are praising him, we are doing everything, but his reality is not alive in us. And this is one of the things that God is bringing back to life in the lives of the believers, in the life of the church, the reality of Christ coming back in the hearts of men and women of God in Jesus' mighty name. I am talking of the reality of Christ where he becomes almost visible to you. I am talking of the reality of Christ in the heart where you are totally, you are 110% assured of the reality of Christ. If today you ask many Christians, if you put a gun on their hands and you ask them, are you totally sure of the reality of Christ? How many can say, I am ready to die because he is real in me, and I am double sure, I am 100% sure of his reality. Do we have such a reality that we can put our lives on life because of him? Those who are before us, the Bible tells us, they did not love their lives unto death. Because of what? It is because of the reality of Christ that was in them. That is why they couldn't even fear death. That is why a man like Peter could say, sacrifice me upside down. Because of the reality of Christ in his heart. This is what God wants to bring back to us. That when we are worshipping him, that when we are praising him, it is with his reality 
in our hearts. A man who has the reality of Christ in the heart. They are praying as different. They are worshipping as different. You can see them worship with the reality. Because I say, when Jesus is real in your heart, he almost becomes visible. It is like a man you can see before you. When you are praying, he is so real. It's like you are speaking to a man you can see. You know when you are praying, when you are worshipping, there are people who are done. Now, who is reasoning? Are we throwing it into the air? Because he is not real. But when he is real, he is a man who is like he is visible to you. That's why you see some people praying, you think, are they talking to somebody? No, it is because he is so real to them. It's like they are seeing him before them. That is when you look at some people worshipping, you wonder, what is, what is wrong with these people? Are they seeing something I'm not seeing? No, it is not in their physical eyes, it is in the heart. When the reality of Christ is in the people, that becomes the drive in the things of God. It becomes the drive. Our praying is different. Our worshipping is different. We don't come to church because of identity. We come to church because of the reality of Christ in us. That is what makes us wake up early in the morning. That is what is pushing you out of the house in the morning. That is what causes you to close your business and go for the district prayers. That is what causes you to close your business and come for the... Because there is a push of the reality of Christ in our hearts. It is like these two men who are walking to a mouse. And they met with Jesus in reality. And they are walking with Jesus and they do not know he is Jesus. But listen, after they discovered that it was Jesus. In verses that too, they say, we are not our hearts burning within us. When they met Jesus in reality, when Jesus was real to them, this is their testimony. We are not our hearts burning within us. When Jesus is real in our heart, when the reality of Christ is alive in our heart, brethren, there is a burning. There is a passion. There is a zeal in us. There is an excitement in our heart. When Jesus is real in us, brethren, there is a fire burning in our heart. And this fire is, is visible. This fire is visible in our serving God. This fire is visible in our worshiping God. This fire is visible in our giving. It is visible in all our engagement with God. Somebody who is on fire for Christ, I want to tell you, they are visible. The fire is visible. When the reality of Christ is in us, I want to tell you, there is a burning. Tell somebody there is a burning. Hallelujah. That is the first thing that God wants to bring back to life. May it be your portion today. May it be my portion today. That as I leave the service today, that the reality of Christ will be so alive in me. You know this reality, it is so real, especially that's the, the very first time you give your life to Christ. If you want to know what I'm talking about, look at the people who have given their lives recently. Look at them and you see. That is what I'm talking about. You can remember when you gave your life to Christ the first time. You know, when I gave my life to Christ, I want to tell you, I wanted to preach to everyone. I was telling everybody Jesus is coming soon. It was so real. If that time you had put a gun on me, I would have told you, you are late. You would have shot yesterday. That's the reality that God wants to bring back to us. And it will not go away again. In the name of Jesus. We are not going to be mechanical people anymore. Worshipping Jesus without the reality in the heart. Lifting up our hearts, but the heart is not there. We are going to begin to worship God with the reality. In the name of Jesus. And that will be a portion today in Jesus' mighty name. Number two. When God is speaking of labor, number one, I have said he wants to bring back to life. There are so many other things that God will bring back to life. But to me, that is the central point. Because that reality of Christ is what determines how you pray, is what determines how you worship, is what determines how you give, is what determines how you serve God. 
It is what determines all your engagement with God. Hallelujah. Number two, when God is speaking of restoration, what does he want to restore? He wants to restore us back to the former level. If you're writing, just write that away, explain. He wants to restore the church in the former level. Tell somebody the former level. In the book of Revelation 2, verses 4 to 5, where we read our leading words of the call to worship. If you can have them on the screen, I'll be glad. Listen to this. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Go to the second, because today I'm not dealing with the love. I'm now dealing with the second, where God explains himself concerning the, the, the previous verse. Consider how far you have fallen. Now, God speaks to the church of Ephesus. This is a church that was known of love. Even when Paul was writing the letter of Ephesus, the first thing he congratulated them for was their love. It was known. And now God says, I have something I hold against you. And the thing is, it is, that you do, it is not that you don't love anymore. Not, not, that is not my accusation. That is not what I hold against you. This is what I hold against you. There is a level you are walking in love, but now you have fallen. What I am accusing you now, it is the level you are walking in, in your love. I am not accusing you that you don't love anymore, that there is no love in you anymore, but the level you were walking in love, you have fallen. That's what I hold against you. Listen to me, church of God. There is a level that God expects us to walk in. There is a level that God expects us to operate in individually and even as a church. In the things of God, there is a level that God expects us to walk in. In prayer, in fasting, in our giving, in our service to God, in our love, in all the things we do in God, there is a level that God expects us to walk in and to operate in. And that is why he accusing the church of Ephesus. Not because they don't have love, but they have declined from the level they were walking in. He is saying categorically, you have fallen. You have fallen. There is a level you used to walk in. That is the level I expected you to walk in. But you are no longer walking in that level. My brothers, my sisters, in the kingdom of God, there is a level that God expects us to walk in. And I want to tell you this, that the results we achieve in the kingdom are not just in the kingdom, but in this life, they are determined by the level you are walking in or the level you are operating in. The results you achieve in this life, the results you achieve in the kingdom, they are determined by the level you walk in or the level you operate in. Our impact as a church, our impact individually is determined by the level we walk in in the things of God. And that is what happens in the world. This life is a life of levels. That is why there is a job you can get with a certificate. And there is a job you can never get with a certificate. You go for that kind of a job, they will tell you the level you are operating in is not for this job. There is a job you can't get with a degree. You go, they tell you, no, we are looking for somebody who is operating in the level of masters. Because this life is a life of levels. And the results and your impact in this life, even as a church, our impact in the world is determined by the level we walk in and the level we operate. When God is speaking of revival, it is restoring us to that level that you give results. It is restoring us to that level 
that you impart the world in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says in Psalms 42 verses 7, the deep calls unto the deep. Psalms 42 verses 7, the deep calls unto the deep. The deep calls to the deep. What does that mean? It is the deep calling to the deep. Your results are directly proportional to the level of your operation in this life. And that happens also in the kingdom. I don't know why sometimes we think these things belong to the world. And we think in the kingdom of God we can operate anywhere, anyhow, and still get the results. There's a man of God who, who passed on what called Morris Cellular. He used to say, all truth is parallel. What you see happening in the physical happens in the spiritual. The principles that you see operating in the physical, they operate in the spiritual. If the principle of levels operate in the physical, they operate in the spiritual. And the results we get in the kingdom, they are directly proportional to the level of our operation. And I'll prove that. The results you want in your family, the results you want in your business, the results you want in your children, the results you want in your marriage, I want to tell you, they are determined by the level you walk in and you operate in the spiritual things. Jesus, in the book of Luke, now I get there in the next five minutes. Luke chapter 5. Jesus goes to the lake of Genesaret. And the disciples were there. And the Bible says he took one of the boats. He began to preach. It belonged to Peter. Now, something interesting happens in verses 4. He tells Peter, put that scripture, please. Now, see this. There's something we always miss out on here. The Bible says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the net for a catch. We are so much, and our attention so much is on letting down the nets. But there's something I want you to understand here. Jesus didn't just tell Peter to put out the, down the nets. He also taught him the specific level. Is it true? He told him of the level. Peter, I am not telling you to back, go back to the sea and put the nets anywhere. I am saying you put it in deep water. He gave the level to put out the nets. And he called it the deep water. Verses 5. Now I show you. Now, hear what Simon says. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night and haven't caught anything. Now I want to show you. The contrast in these two verses. Jesus said, put out in the deep. And he was specific. Of the level where the nest should be put in. Peter says, we have worked all night and caught nothing. I want you to understand, they were fishing at night. If there's somebody here from coast, Nyanza, they can tell you. No fisherman will risk his life to fish in what we call deep waters at night. No one. Because in the sea, if you have ever been to like Indian Ocean, I've ever been there once, and we went into the sea, into the ocean, with something called the pilot boat, and we went somewhere near. We didn't get there because we off yard called deep waters. In the sea, there are levels, and there is where called deep waters. This is where you can find the whales. This is where you can find the sharks in deep waters. And I want to tell you at night, no fisherman you risk to go and fish in the deep waters because if anything happens, no more they can save you. So the highest probability they were fishing at the seashore. Just at the seashore. That's where they are working all night. All night. The problem was not working at night. It is the level they worked at at night. They couldn't risk going where the harvest is. They couldn't launch into the deep because it is risky at night. So they were fishing, but they were at the seashore. And Jesus knew that because he was also a very good fisherman. He was also a Jew. And that is why he began by telling him, Peter, put out in the deep. Because in, I know you have been fishing at night, and I know the level you have been operating in, it is at the seashore. 
And this is why in the church, we are saying like Peter, I have been praying all along, no result. I have been studying the word, no result. I have been giving all along. But Jesus says, Peter, launch into the deep. Because I know the level you have been operating in. Hallelujah. Amen. Many times we are excited by the results. Even in the kingdom of God. Look at us when we read the Bible. What excites us is the result. But I want to tell you something today. Never forget this. It will turn around your life. This message will turn around your life this year. There are things you are going to unlock this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the problem is not the sea where you have been fishing. The problem is not when you have been fishing. It is the level you have been fishing. That is the trouble. Most of the times as a church, we are excited by the results. Even when we read the Bible, we are only excited by the results. Oh God, you told Abraham, you make him a great nation. Whoever blesses him will be blessed. Whoever curses him. Then we come here on Saturday and we are claiming the same blessing. God, make me a great nation. Whoever blesses me will be blessed. Whoever curses me will be cursed. Before you claim the results, look at the level that man operated in. The level that produced those results. A man, God tells him, leave your house. Leave your father. Go to a nation that even doesn't know. And even God does not explain where he is taking him. And the man obeys. That is the level of obedience. Then you are here, oh, disobeying every small instruction. Wake up at night and pray, and you are disobeying. We are fasting as a district, you disobey. Then you are here, make me a great nation like Abraham. Before you are excited by the results, look at the level that man operated in to get those results. Oh, Joseph, he slept a prisoner. He woke up a prime minister in the name of Jesus. I will sleep a prisoner and wake up a um, uh, prime minister. <laughs> but look at the level of consecration the man operated in. An evil opportunity presents itself, and he says a capital no. And then you are here saying yes to every small evil opportunity. You have an opportunity to gossip, you say yes. You have an opportunity not to forgive, you say yes. And then I'll sleep a prisoner and wake up a prime minister. The level that produces such results, it is a level of saying no. Hallelujah. You know, when I was young, a young minister, I intermarry the next service. When I was a young minister, I was on fire for God. Fire for God. Fire it. Either night or fire Those days, I even didn't know how to speak English. I can tell you the truth. My friend. You know, there are many people who have gone to school. Tell them to start here. And they swallow the tongue. I can tell you the truth. I was young. Fire for God. And that was my first uh, English service to preach in a church. And let me tell you, I didn't hear myself. I wonder whether those people heard. <laughs> Later on, those who I was preaching to, I never heard. In fact, there's a word I saw there. There's a song we were singing. Awesome God. I remember those days we used to, I was in the village, we used to say, our God is a now awesome God. Oh, and you preach powerfully. And then those days we would call God our refugee, other than our refuge. <laughs> I am giving you a life testimony. After that service, I was so much discouraged, and I went home and I told God, oh, I can see God. You planned to shame me. I'm not preaching this thing anymore. Because, let me tell you, by the time I was leaving the first day of that church, I was flying. Because I was wondering, I didn't hear myself. What about the people I preached to? So those days I was just on fire for God. And I remember I used to read so many books about many preachers. I used to read about Mole Seruro, about Ben Hinn, about Bonke, all the preachers I would know in the world, even those who died a long time ago, week was worth. And I used to be so much excited by the results I could see in them. So one day I read a book about Mole Seruro. He had gone for a crusade in Haiti. And in that place, God did great, great miracles. Men and people who had no legs. Watch here, Mugu Iko, Niku. As people watch. And that time I'm on fire for God. And I said, now it is my time. Hallelujah. And thank God he is good. After I have read this book, an opportunity arises. 
and there is, I am invited to a wicked challenge in a certain school in Yahururu. And that time I'm on fire, I'm asking, let them bring the creepers. Let them bring those who don't have legs. They are going to grow. You know I'm excited by those results. And many of us, we have. Is it true? Even in the Bible, you have only been excited all along by the result. So, in that school, there was a girl who had a heart that was a bit cold. It was like this. A bit folded. It was not folding. And I said, God, I thank you. Oh, hallelujah. When I saw her, I was excited. And I knew, here a big miracle is in the offing. I'll be on the news. <laughs> the weekend charge was beginning on Friday. It was ending on Sunday. And let me tell you, we had gone with another brother. Uyo mstana tulivuta iyo mkono. Hizo sikutatu. I still pity that girl until today. But by Sunday, the heart was still as hard and as folded as it was before. But of course, I encouraged the people and I told them, it is going to unfold with the time. But that was not what I was expecting because of the results I had seen. And I went on wondering, what had Morris Arulo did, I didn't do. And then I went back and I began to research about this man. And I found that this man called Morris Arulo, I know we know him, he had preached all over the world. This man was praying seven hours a day. When you see some people impacting the world, they don't sleep from 8 to 8. I can tell you the truth. The man was praying for 7 hours a day. That time, I'm praying for that a minute. That is the level I'm operating in. But the results I want and I'm claiming and I'm fighting for does not belong to that level. If I knew, I would have just rebuked codes and the rest. In the kingdom, look at all men. Don't just look at the results. Look at the level they walked in. And I thank God for the Bible. And it does not just give us the results. It also tells us the level. David, Daniel is praying in Daniel 10 too. And an angel is sent from heaven to release the angel who had his miracle. But Daniel had operated in 21 days of prayer and fasting for the Jorek ministry to be activated. And you are here awake, sleeping from 8 to 8 and you are calling for a Jorek ministry in your life. Esther, Moradikai, you remember that story of Haman? How God turned a whole plan and it turned against a man who had planned it. And we like claiming that. It will go back to the cedar. In fact, the church of today, we are very good in this of Akina Muradikai. I'm sending it back to the cedar like it was sent in times of Muradikai. But before it was sent back to the cedar, look at the level these men and women operated in. They fasted for three days without food, without drinking anything. Hallelujah. It is only in the kingdom we want to maintain the same level of giving, but we want God to make our financial levels better every year. You want to give 200 all the years, but you are claiming millions. Hapo imeni mepugua. Oh God, this year 2023, and I know we have declared, I am going in another level in my financial life. Let me tell you the heaven is looking and saying, okay, you want to go to another level and you have not increased the level you are operating in because if you want to increase the results, increase your level of operation. Amen. God bless you. Let's rise up on our feet in Jesus' name. I just want you to lift up your hands in two minutes. And I just want you to make two prayers, very passionately. Tell the Holy Spirit of God, because he is the catalyst of revival, because he is the agent of restoration, tell him to put your heart alive again to the reality of Christ. You may not know what you are praying, but I'm telling you, you are going to experience a tremendous change in your life. Just passionately tell the Holy Spirit of God, you are the catalyst of revival. You are the catalyst of restoration. I want you to put my heart alive again to the reality of Christ. As the Lord speaks to us this morning, I know you are witness. You know where you used to be. You know how you were on fire for Christ. You know the burning that was in you. You know the zeal for Christ that was in you. You know the excitement that was in you. But the excitement is no more. In the name of Jesus, tell the Holy Spirit of God, put my heart alive again. 
in the, to the reality of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands and speak to the Holy Spirit of God. He is the catalyst of revival. He is the catalyst. He is the agent of restoration. There is no revival without the Holy Spirit. There is no restoration without the Holy Spirit of God. May you cry to him passionately this morning and tell him, set my heart on fire for God again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I was zealous for God. There was a burning in my life. I want you to set me on fire again. Holy Spirit of the living God, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are the catalyst of revival. You are the agent of restoration. This morning in the mighty name of Jesus, I call upon you, Holy Spirit of God. May you move in our lives this morning. May you move upon every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray this morning, may you open the heavens upon this auditorium, my Father, and pour out your Holy Spirit as it was in the day of Pentecost in the mighty name of Jesus and set on our hearts on fire again, on fire for God in the mighty name of Jesus Holy Spirit of God may you set the hearts of men on fire for Christ may you put the hearts of women on fire for Christ may you put the hearts of women on fire for Christ Holy Spirit of God set our hearts on fire set our hearts on fire set our hearts on fire move this morning Holy Spirit of God touch our hearts touch our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus let our passion be restored let the zeal of God be restored in the mighty name of Jesus I want you just to make one more prayer that the Lord may grace you to operate in that level that can give you the harvest like Peter God and Jesus is very clear it is no other level. It is called the deep level. I want you to tell God, give me the grace to launch into the deep in my prayer life. To launch into the deep in my fasting life. To launch into the deep in my giving. To launch into the deep in my service. Tell God to grace you this morning. To operate in that level. My brothers, my sisters, it is possible to operate in that level. That the men of the old palate, it is possible to fast for three days. It is possible to pray for hours. It is possible to stand in the word every day. Tell to grace you. Tell the Lord to bestow grace upon your life. To operate in that level. That you give the results in your family. That you give you results in your marriage. That you cause you to be a man and a woman of impact. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just pray, 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 pray. I want to hear people pray this morning. This is only by grace. Tell God, grace me from this day in my life. That I may be able to launch into the deeper. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bestow us with your grace. It is your grace, oh my Father. In this place this morning. Oh Lord, may you grace us. That we may be able to open it. In that level you are calling us. In our prayer lives. In our in our service to God release the grace release the grace release the grace Father I pray let there be grace let there be grace upon men this morning let there be grace the grace of prayer the grace of prayer in the name of Jesus oh Lord grace us the grace of fasting the grace of giving the grace of service let there be grace in the name of Jesus we serve a God of miracles. If you have a need, just lift up your hand. We believe together. If you have a need this morning, just lift up your hand wherever you are. We are believing for the working grace of God. If you are sick, let's believe God. If you are believing God to make a way, just lift up your hand. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your grace, oh my God, that works in the lives of your people. I thank you for your grace that works out miracles. This morning I pray for the flow of grace upon every hand that is lifted by faith this morning. Let there be the flow of grace. Let there be the flow of grace. And let the sick be healed. Let the power be set free. Let those who don't have peace, let those families be healed. Let those marriages be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the grace of God, let there be a way this morning. Father, we pray that, that we don't just want to hear you. We want to see you. Let your people see you in every issue of their lives. Let there be a way in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.